Hello and welcome to Extraordinary Women TV with Shannon Skinner. My first guest today is Jennifer Black. She is a financial planner and founder of Widowed.ca. Later in the segment, before we take a break, I'll have my regular Good to Know Minute when I ask my guests for their top tip on living a successful life. You will hear Jennifer's. In the second half of the show, we will be talking about treating illnesses using plants. So stay tuned. So Jennifer Black is the founder of Widow.ca, which is Canada's free online resource for widows, widowers and their loved ones, providing information about government benefits, grief support, professional services and more to help people cope with the loss of a spouse and partner. Um, Jennifer Black, welcome to the studio today. Thank you, Shannon. Nice to have you here. Now, um, before we talk about uh, Widow.ca and financial uh, planning, you are very active with sports. I know this is something that's very passionate about you. You have two daughters uh, that you shuttle to and fro between events, and uh, when you can, you squeeze in some, um, you know, some uh, tennis. I think it's yes. very important for you. Yeah, I started playing when I was about seven years old, and um, really never looked back. Continued to to train hard, and was actually able to secure a uh, full scholarship to the United States uh, for university and um, I was a uh, nationally ranked um, and then internationally ranked as well and also tennis player yeah and um, also started to play some professional tournaments when I got injured and um, subsequently came back to Canada after completing my uh, university degree at uh, University of Nebraska and um, that's when I got started in the financial planning industry. So what, what actually um, drew you to financial planning, financial services? So there were, there were really a couple of things. Um, the first was that my mother was in the financial planning industry and at the time that I came back from university and, and having been injured, not being able to continue with my tennis career, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, so I joined her and helped her in her, her financial planning practice. And um, the first day I can remember her throwing the books on my desk and saying, okay, well, you know, keep studying. And, you know, you got to get, uh, get cracking on the books. And so I uh, got my designations to become a financial advisor and um, continued to do that over the years. Um, but really what has kept me involved in it is just being able to help people understand their situation. So helping them understand not just the finances in general, whether it's budgeting or understanding what they have um, as far as their investments, but helping them plan for their retirement or their futures and understanding how that works. And uh, I would imagine that a lot of that too is uh, helping them um keep their emotions in check because isn't is it really that sort of behind truly behind money management is emotional management absolutely yeah. um, definitely one of the best reasons to use a professional when you're dealing with investing and and uh, with your finances is because they're not as emotional about the money as they're investing it it's uh, you know it's their day-to-day -day business so they're not going to be as emotionally connected and um, when you allow your emotions to get in there, it can corrode that framework or that philosophy that you have. So. Now, you, um, of course, are the founder of Widow.ca, which is uh, what we're, we're talking about today. Um, and to preface this, 70,000 women in Canada uh, are, lose their partners or their spouse every year. Um, 70,000 widows a year in Canada. That's, that's seems to me it's quite a high number. Yeah, it, it definitely does seem high. It's, um, you know, there's a couple of things that women actually, so it's 70,000 women who are widowed every year. Uh, it's a four to one ratio, women to men. So there's, you know, just under 20,000 men whose spouses die every year as well. And um, currently there's about 1.6 million widows and widowers in Canada. So it's definitely a growing number of individuals that um, need to deal with this issue. Now, what are the implications um, in, in Canada, in our society, with, with uh, you know, so many widows and widowers every year? You know, that's a great question because 
there are so many different implications that um, every, each person faces that are unique to them, that are uh, different and affect them uh, differently throughout their day-to-day -day lives. Um, everyone grieves differently and everyone has um, you know, different circumstances, whether they have children or aged uh, older parents that they're dealing with as well, things like that that they have to deal with as well as going through that grief and dealing with decisions that they now need to, to face. Um, one of the main things that I see as a financial planner is that the typically the women are not as involved in the finances and so that's something that as the men are, are you right. saying that usually right they're not as as involved with dealing with the financial advisor or um, right. understanding the investments they're leaving that to their husbands or they're um, allowing their spouse to take on that role that duty while they're doing other things like maybe dealing more with the children or whatever that is and it's very important that everyone that both people know everything about um, whether it's the finances or uh, just their specific situation so that when something like this happens they can jump into those additional roles that they need to. So a couple needs to be on the same page basically. Absolutely. Now let's talk about uh, widow.ca. Um, what is it? So widow.ca is a uh, free online resource mm -hmm. for widows and widowers and their loved ones. Uh, widows or widowers can go directly to the go to the site themselves, look up information. There's a number of frequently asked questions on there, as well as articles that are written by some of our um, experts in different, different industries. And it's really one place that people need to go to gather or get the information that they're looking for. And we attempt to answer all of the questions that they might have. And if for some reason they can't find something on the site, they can just phone in and we can guide them through it or, or help them in determining what the best connection is for them. So uh, in terms of the site, then you would have experts in, in, array, in a range of fields. So obviously financial planning, uh, legal advisors, uh, other areas like health, real estate. Yeah. Yes. Did I leave out anything? So, um, grief you know, support. there's grief support. Yeah. We are definitely connected to um, a number of uh, companies that deal with grief support and um, like you mentioned realtors lawyers um, downsizing people so somebody who can come in help either with home organization you know one of the biggest uh, questions that I think they they face that we actually have an article on our site about is cleaning out the closet after right, and, yeah. and how do you do that so some steps and tips on on how to do that because that can't um, be easy I'm right sure. yeah. and and you know really consulting with professionals is uh, is definitely I would suggest a good idea and we've also got uh, financial ourselves uh, dedicated financial solutions as well as other financial uh, companies that can help right so the, the so the name of your company you have two companies dedicated financial solutions is uh, your financial planning um, company right um, separate from widow.ca uh, now why what sparked you to create this? Did you see a need? Yeah, so there were three, really three things that happened to me through um, the years that I've been doing financial planning. And the first thing was, um, I mentioned I, I had done a number of courses and, and uh, continued the education stream as I was uh, developing my financial planning. And one of the courses I learned that the average age of a woman when she's widowed is 55 and that struck me to be quite young so right, yeah. really understanding that you know there, there are so many things that they would face at that point in their life the second thing actually was um, Janet my business partner and, and mother and I um, we actually sat down and looked at we analyzed dedicated financial solutions and who our clients were and what type of clients we had uh, been working with the most and we realized that we had a lot of widows and widowers that we were working with and it really wasn't that we had gone out looking to work with that type of individual it was that 
we'd have a widower or widower and they would refer another widow to right. us. Right, yeah. And really the third piece was that um, a friend of mine, her husband passed away at the age of 36 and I saw what she had to go through but more importantly a couple years after she actually came to me for some life insurance and while I was sitting with her going through her whole situation asking her all the questions I realized that she wasn't getting the benefits she was entitled and uh, the benefits from the government it was actually the children's benefit for her daughter that she wasn't getting right yeah and so what I realized there was that it's not only the um, the fact that you know a lot of funeral homes are actually taking that on themselves and and filling in forms having uh, all that done for the clients while they're there during the funeral process and then mailing that off to the government on their behalf which when we looked into it had all been done the problem was that my friend didn't know she was entitled that benefit so she wasn't expecting it and when it got to the government it was just put in incorrectly there was an error in the processing and because of that error she wasn't getting the benefits so if she had known that she was entitled she might have been able to catch that mistake um, but because it was a government error they did backdate the full two years which uh, they would only do one year so it worked out that you know she didn't miss out on anything but over to her those advantage, yeah, right, her advantage, right but over those two years it would have been much more helpful if she had been receiving the benefits as she should have been. Right. So you saw a gap then. Yeah, and I, w I wanted to make sure that people people actually knew what they were entitled um, when they were ready to hear the information. So if you're sitting with a funeral director and you're not you're being told that you're entitled money but your spouse has just passed away, you may not hear that. Yeah, you're not really in that sort of state to hear. Right. Perhaps you're really grieving. Absolutely, and not, you know, not, uh, yeah, not not absorbing all the information that uh, that uh, is being thrown at you at those mm -hmm. times. So there really was a need. Um, how do you choose what sort of experts you pull into the resource uh, to, you know, into the site? So a lot of the companies that are listed on the site, we've gotten through word of mouth. Um, spoken. I did a number of focus groups with widows and widowers that. Um, you know, some who had been widowed maybe 20 years ago when I was starting the site initially and just asking them who did they use, what, what is it they used that they felt was very beneficial and what do they wish they had had um, help with. And then a number of them would provide, provided us with some names of individuals who they had used that they felt were reputable companies and had really helped them. And we started there and then um, just developed through uh, speaking to people and, and talking to individuals to make sure that they are trustworthy and, and you know, we are uh, willing to promote them to uh, somebody who's been widowed. Now, Jennifer, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, and before we do, I've got my Good to Know Minute. And I know that you've got a great tip for the viewers. Yes, my, su my success tip is that uh, you shouldn't be afraid to ask for something. So if, you're, uh, if you want something and you're afraid that somebody's going to say no, you should still ask because the worst they can do is say no. And if you don't ask, then you're basically guaranteeing that the answer is no. Well, thank you so much. We're going to take a quick break and when we come back, more with Jennifer Black, financial planner and founder of widowed.ca. Stay right there. Hi, I'm Shannon Skinner. Welcome back to Extraordinary Women TV. And I'm speaking with Jennifer Black, who's a financial planner and founder of widowed.ca. Um, Jennifer, what is the first step that, uh, you know, from your background, the first step that someone should do financially when they lose a spouse? What should be the first thing that they actually think of? I mean, obviously there's a time of grief. Um, perhaps thinking of finances is not really going to be the top of mind immediately. Um, but when it comes time to start thinking about finances, what is the first thing that they should do? So the, f the first thing they should do is consult a professional. Um, making sure that they are consulting with somebody who 
they can build a relationship with or they have a relationship with or um, somebody that they're comfortable with. Um, it's actually, there's an interesting stat in the U.S. 70% uh, of women whose spouses pass away will change financial advisors within the first year. So that really speaks to that, you know, the, the men being um, more likely to be connecting with the advisor, dealing with the advisor, and then the women looking for um, a change or looking for somebody that they can relate to a bit better. Um, but from my perspective, the first thing that they need to do when they're consulting with that professional is really making sure that they understand what they have today. So it's not about having an, uh, this professional say, okay, you know what, this is your situation, here's the changes you need to make, do this, 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 and this. It's about first understanding what is it that we have today? Do you understand what you have today? Um, you know, there's a number of cases that I've dealt with where the individual comes in never having dealt with the finances, not only that, maybe never even having had to write a check. So just taking them through those steps and, and educating them on these are the investments you have today, this is what, what this is, um, there might be some new goal setting that has to be done so that we know what, what plan we're trying to follow and then really um, helping them you know, take that slowly. Right. Um, now, for for your client, I mean, you say that women will will often you seeing them change uh, financial planners. Mm -hmm. Is that a shock to you? Is that is that? Uh... Um, it's not. It's not a shock to me because a lot of the times, um, the advisor that relates to the husband a bit better, the wife may maybe if she's not involved, then she's not as comfortable going to that individual because she hasn't built that relationship. Um, so I think it's important for advisors to make sure that they are building a relationship with both individuals in that. Now, what about um, uh, you know uh, wi widows and widowers who aren't maybe so technically um, inclined and, and aren't really on the internet? Um, and obviously, your your resources on the internet. Um, is it their loved ones that can help them? guide them through the, you know, go, go online and, and get what they need or how do you reach out to people who aren't on, the com on a computer? So that's a great question. It's actually one that I faced when I was first starting the site as well, doing the focus groups. As I mentioned, a number of the individuals were widowed a number of years ago and were a bit older, weren't, um, hadn't adopted to using a computer or um, weren't online. and. The thing that I found in talking to them a bit further is if they were looking for solutions or looking for information, they were likely looking through either an adult child, maybe a sibling or a cousin or somebody who is, is online who has the ability to source that information and, and look things up for them. Um, so that's why we've really tried to make the site open to anyone who feels they want to be on there to look for information. So um, it could even be a caregiver who might be caring for uh, a widow or widower who's, um, whose spouse has just passed away. They've come in to try to provide support for the family, but there's some needs that are there and they, they can go online and it's free for them to go on and look up information that they uh, they might need so really adding additional value as well. Jennifer, what is the difference between a living will and a, and a will? So a living will is a document that would speak to um, really the question is better asked for the, the lawyers but right, um, yeah. just the, a brief description. A living will is something that would speak to um, decisions that should be made while the individual is still alive, um, whether that's you know basically putting information down that uh, if you you know do not resuscitate and things like that, right. that would be found in a living will. Okay. Whereas a, a will would outline what should happen at death. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Because yeah. there's a lot of confusion uh, out there about the differences. Yeah. Um, is part of your role educating a little bit on that or that's really not really the role of a financial planner, that's really the role of a, a lawyer then? 
That would really be uh, more towards the lawyers, but um, within my role, I would uh, f I would ask those questions and find out if individuals have done a will, and um, strongly urge them to do one if it's uh, if it's the right situation or if it's necessary, and then sure. refer them to somebody who who right. I believe can help. Now, what is the role then of an executor? Because that's another thing that. Uh, is uh, kind of this you know obscure thing for many people what does an executor actually do yeah so an executor would administer the estate so if there is a will they would follow that and um, make sure that whatever um, belongings are to be passed on to certain individuals and beneficiaries that that's followed accordingly they would also ensure that the final tax return is done and um, ensure that things such as um, social insurance numbers, passports and things like that are cancelled and uh, really it's a lot of paperwork right. and um, I'd, I'd strongly encourage people to think about the um, requirements of being an executor before they agree to be one because a lot of times people find themselves as being an executor and don't really know um, you know how much work it's actually going to be so it can be quite a bit of work I believe I saw somewhere on your site that executors can actually get paid for the taking on the role by it's law a, executors yeah. are um, it is a paid position that uh, they can choose not to be paid for sure. the role but um, the law does state that um, they can be compensated for the work they do because it is it is such a such a large task. Now, what happens when someone dies and they don't have a will? I mean, what are the ramifications? I've you know I've heard all sorts of um, horror stories. So let's set the record straight. You know, what happens so financially anyway? Right. The, you know what? There are so many different things that could happen. Um, it, and it, the interesting thing is, so if you look at it from a financial perspective, now you've got all these assets that go directly to the estate of the individual. There, there's all these assets in the estate and they need to be um, passed out to the beneficiaries, but there's really, on some of them, there's no beneficiaries listed. So there is a, per province, there is a guideline as to what um, happens with, you know, the first 200,000 goes to the spouse, if the spouse is remaining, the, the next um, amount is split among children evenly and then, and, and so there is this uh, chart really that can be followed. Um, but it's interesting, we actually had a, a client ask us the other day um, based on looking at this chart and, and her kind of analyzing it for um, Ontario saying, you know, isn't it better if, we, if he doesn't make a will? And really when you, when you get down to it, Having a will means that you get to make the decisions or you get to at least explain what you'd like to have happen, happen at your death. So even if as per that chart, it looks like it'll just pass the way it should or the way you'd like it to, you still have to have somebody apply to the court to be the administrator of the estate, uh, administrator of the estate. And then once the court grants them that permission, um, assuming that they're the only one that applied, right? So right, if you have yeah. any siblings or anyone else who thought they were entitled to something, they're probably applying. Right. And then, you know, they've got to go through and they've got to uh, deal with that estate in a similar manner as to when there's a will, they just don't have everything outlined. Um, so people can contest it more easily. People can go to court and fight the uh, decisions that are being made by the administrator and um, it can be tied up in court for years. So really having a will, it, it's just one more step that you can take now to ensure that you're not leaving, you know, leaving your estate out there to be fought after. Well, Jennifer Black, um, I'm afraid we're out of time now, but uh, thank you so much for coming on the show and talking about uh, what you do and about your unique online resource, uh, widow.ca. Really appreciate your time. Great, thank you very much. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, I'll be joined by Morwenna 
Given, who is a medical herbalist and will be talking about um, treating illnesses using plants. So stay right there.